that today we'll discuss about what are the associated problems. See, every technology has its advantages, has its disadvantages. So we should use the technology properly. We must understand what are the advantages, we must understand what are the disadvantages. So the outline of presentation is what are the different RF sources present in our atmosphere today. Then I will talk about radiation pa pattern of the cell tower antenna. Then I'll talk about EMF exposure safety norms. Then we'll also do about radiation measurements near cell towers. So talk about review biological effects. Uh, that is not really too much of my contribution. My daughter uh, Neha Kumar who did VTEC in biotechnology. So that part I'll try to skip a little faster. And then I'll come about some case studies and conclusion. The radiation is emitted from cell phones, uh, cell phone towers, Wi-Fi. We have TV and FM towers, microwave ovens, ETC. And these radiations are called electromagnetic radiations. Let's just look at what are the various RF sources. So let's start with the thing here. We have FM tower. Uh, FM tower frequency ranges 88 to 108 megahertz. That is what is the FM band. Power transmitted by this FM tower is 10 kilowatt. And just for comparison, a microwave oven has a power of about 500 watt. Okay, so compared to 500 watt, we have 10 kilowatt power getting transmitted from the FM tower. And in India today, we have more than 500 towers. Just in Mumbai, we have eight FM towers. So within several hundreds of meters, the radiation level is very high. Then we also have AM tower. And AM tower radiation is between 540 to 1600 kilohertz. The tower may transmit about 100 kilowatt of power. Uh, then we have lots of Wi-Fi. Uh, which works in the frequency range of 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz. So Wi-Fi connectivity, uh, the power level is generally small, 10 to 100 milliwatt. But we have these Wi-Fi hotspots very close to the people who are living. So hence it is something which you cannot ignore. And there is a one additional problem. Some of these Wi-Fi now, in order to connect uh, and cover a larger area. They are actually going even as high as 1 watt also. And remember they are going to transmit close to 24 hours. Right now in India we have three main bands. Fourth has already been approved. 800 megahertz we have a CDMA. Then in 900 band we have GSM 900. We have GSM 1800 band. And now 3G has come which is in 1900 and 2100 and they have, they have allowed 20 watt of power. This 20 watt was supposed to be a cumulative thing, but what they are doing, they are using 20 watt for each carrier. And there can be 20 carriers in the GSM 900 band. 20 carrier multiplied by 20 watt, they are almost transmitting 400 watt of power. Try to compare this with a microwave oven. Uh, if you put, let's say, uh, one cup of water, okay, so it just takes roughly say one minute or so, right? 4.2 kilowatt of microwave power raises temperature of one liter of water by one degree centigrade in one second. That much power is required to heat the temperature by one degree centigrade. So in terms of energy, 4.2 kilowatt second microwave energy will increase the temperature of one liter by one degree centigrade. So for example, in a microwave oven, temperature of one cup of water increases from 30 degree centigrade to 100 degree centigrade in approximately 70 seconds. That means in one second, temperature goes up by 1 degree centigrade. That is from 500 watt of power. This mobile phone transmit 1 watt of power. Energy is nothing but power multiplied by time. So 1 watt power will take about 500 seconds to raise the temperature by 1 degree centigrade. So now what is 500 seconds equivalent to? Just about less than 9 minutes. So in about 9 minutes, it can do the same thing what the microwave oven will do in one second, right? So we have a, this may transmit two watt maximum, let's say one watt. Now that one watt, roughly one third of that is received by the head. So it may take little longer time. In fact, I would like to ask you people, have you ever noticed that if you use mobile phone for longer time, your ear gets warm? It is actually the microwave radiation from this and that microwave radiation is actually heating 
the blood in the ear. Calculation wise, if you see, it takes 500 seconds, but that is if full one watt was absorbed here, right? But you get part of it. And that is why I said roughly about 20 minutes or so, you feel that ears are getting warm, right? You have 100.2 degree fever every time you are going to use mobile phone and it is also drying up the skin. Then the next part is your eyes will getting dried up and now it is also cooking your brain because brain consists of 80% plus liquid. So it is absorbing that microwave radiation and that is getting cooked. Last year itself, 2010, interphone study has come. Now interphone study was sponsored uh, by various agencies. It was a 10 year study. 25 million dollar was spent on that. Now if you read the conclusion of interphone study, it says there are no conclusive evidence of microwave or mobile phone radiation, okay? We have gone through the details of those interphone study. Now within the interphone study, they have claimed heavy user of mobile phone as a user who uses half hour mobile phone per day. And according to them, in 8 to 10 years, it gives rise to brain cancer, increase in probability 200% to 400%. Let's see next. <coughs> what are the statistics in India? Worldwide, of course, we have 4.6 billion mobile subscriptions are there. Now, in India, population is close to 1.15 billion. We have very large subscriber base, highest in the world. And in order to use that large number of mobile phones should be able to communicate, we have nearly 4.5 lakh cell towers. The mobile phone has a SAR value. SAR stands for Specific Absorption Rate. And that specific absorption rate is related to how much radiation is absorbed by your body. And what they actually say that it should be used only for 6 minutes per day. Okay, and the maximum limit is 1.6 watt per kg. So that is what the international standard. This limit of 1.6 watt per kg is only for 6 minutes per day use. The longer use of that will create adverse health effect. And of course, for this 6 minutes, there is a safety margin of 3 to 4. So at the most, you should use 18 to 24 minutes per day. This particular information is not told to our Indian people specifically. And here I would like to give you my personal experience. I was at TEC, that is Telecom Equipment Center. They are TEC, TRAI, DOT. These are the three bodies who do the regulation. And I did talk to this person. I said, you know, do you know this particular thing that the limit is for six minutes per day? So he said, yeah, I know that. He said, why don't you tell to the common man? So at first he said, yeah, we should do that. Suddenly he said, no, 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 that is health minister's job. I said, but health ministry does not know these things. So as a telecom regulatory body, you should inform them. And then he was very silent. I told him that, you know, you know that there are health problems associated with the radiation. He says, yeah, we know that. I said, then why you have adopted such a worse radiation norm in the country? I said, we have to keep operators happy. So if our telecom regulatory body say that we have to keep operators happy, then you can imagine where is your health lying, right? You can see that uh, Motorola, Blackberry, you can see that they are very close to 1.6, 1.5. You can see the SAR values are high. Of course, for some of the model of Samsung, uh, the SAR value is low. The next time, in fact, when you want to buy a mobile phone, along with the features of the mobile phone, please also see what is the SAR value. And it's a very, very simple thing. In the internet search, if you want to do, simply just say SAR mobile phone. You will get the list of all SAR. 1.6 watt per kg is the maximum thing, which multiplied by 6 comes to 9.6, roughly, right? In fact, we just say it is roughly 10. So if the SAR value is 1.25, that means you can use it for roughly 8 minutes. If SAR is 1, then you can roughly use for 10 minutes as a safe thing. So sometimes people ask me, what if I use an ear plug, okay? So you can use ear plug. The problem only thing is that what I notice that people do use ear plug and put a mobile phone here. So then the radiation is going towards your heart, heart, right? Or sometimes they put in their hand or sometimes they put it over here. 
So my answer to these thing is very simple. You decide which part of the body you don't like. Okay. <laughs> so you cook that particular part of the body. Okay. Of course you can use Bluetooth also. But again, use it carefully. If you use Bluetooth, remember when you put the Bluetooth over here, Bluetooth has an additional radiation of 10 milliwatt. So if you want to use hands-free or Bluetooth, the best thing is you keep your mobile phone away from you at least by one foot. Okay? If you can keep it two feet, it's very good. So if you do that, then it will definitely protect you. A few additional things I want to tell you about, that these mobile phones, generally transmit one pulse every minute to communicate with the base station. Now each pulse is let's say of one watt. So now if you are carrying this phone let's say for eight hours in a day, eight into sixty, four hundred eighty pulses are going in that and each pulse is of one watt, maybe fifty percent is absorbed. So remember two hundred forty watt of microwave energy or power you are going to absorb uh, without your knowledge. And in fact, I also see a lot of young people, they keep their mobile phone very next to, to their head when they are going to, they are going for sleep, right? Because they may always expect something. Now see, when you keep this mobile phone next to it, remember it is going to transmit one pulse every minute. So if you are sleeping for let's say 8 hours, so again 8 into 60, 480 water pulses are there. So what's the simple solution? Very simple. Keep the mobile phone at the arm's length, okay? So you can still reach it, but the radiation intercepted by your body will be relatively small, okay? In fact, I can give you one very simple uh, demo also. I'm just going to make a call. Can you see this LED is glowing? See, this LED is glowing without any battery. So this microwave radiation is so strong that it can turn this LED on without any battery. So it actually consists of an antenna. So there is an antenna inside. So it receives that microwave signal. And after that, I have designed a rectifier circuit at microwave frequency. So that gives me a DC voltage. And that DC voltage is large enough to turn on an LED. So imagine if this can turn on LED, which is 1.5 volt you need to turn on an LED. So if it can turn on the LED, just imagine in a different way what is happening to your brain also. So please uh, be careful, you are carrying a live mini microwave oven in your hand and uh, every time you use it roughly for about 10 minutes, it is equivalent to putting your head inside a microwave oven for one second. Okay, now let me focus on the cell tower. The cell tower is a very different problem than a mobile phone. People who live close to cell tower, they are absorbing radiation 24 hours. There are very strange things associated with microwave. You can't see it, you can't smell it, and even you can't feel it over a very short period of time. So let's just see what are the different things associated. So I've written these frequency bands also. For GSM 900, they transmit 935 to 960 MHz. In GSM 1800, the frequency bands are given. And similarly, for 3G, 2110 to 2170 MHz are transmit bands. Along with that, now WiMAX is also coming. Broadband services are coming. So we are going to have more number of radiation in time to come. So let me just talk about the radiation pattern of the antenna. This is the one of those antennas which you see on the rooftop, longer end of a thing. I also say they look similar to a tube like size, right? So roughly size could be 1 meter, 2 meter height and the width could be 30 to 40 centimeters. Imagine yourself that I am a radiating antenna. Okay, so the radiation pattern of that in the horizontal plane, the beam width is like this. Okay, it's a wide beam. So that means people in this region will receive more radiation, people on this side will receive lesser radiation. If it is mounted like this, then these people will receive more radiation, these people will receive less radiation. Then we have to look at the <coughs> vertical plane. In the vertical plane, beam width is very narrow, right? So this is the beam width here. So if I put the antenna like this, then your head or faces are receiving more radiation compared to your feet. If it is tilted down, then your feet will receive more radiation than your face. So let's just look at the one another one on the cell tower. So this is just another view of the cell tower radiation. So you can see that the darker zones are where the radiation <coughs> is more 
as we move away radiation is less that is power varies as 1 by r square where r is the distance distance is increased by 10 times radiation will be reduced by 100 times this is the live example which we studied in depth there is a usha kiran building in the valley area on the left side you see a picture that is a picture which is a seven story building can you see how many antennas are there on top of that and the building on the right is that usha kiran building uh, which is roughly 20 plus story building now the antenna on this uh, left side is mounted at a seven story so what happened uh, the story came in midday that four cancer cases in three consecutive floors six seven eight but the cell tower people kept on saying this 20 plus story building only three people or four people are having cancer you have a you know you are rich people you have a very bad lifestyle and because of that you are having cancer and so on and so forth basically what happened this is the seventh floor so the antennas are mounted their radiation pattern is like this so what happened six floor seven floor eight floor they are within the main beam of the antenna and that is why they are getting more radiation compared to the other floors okay and in fact i do get lot of uh, people talk, uh, coming to me they say how do i fight with operators i said see there is a way until unless we adopt better radiation norms in the country you cannot do anything so let me now just tell why they are safe right now and why entire population in the country is not safe because of the very poor government policies okay so i need to tell a few equations which is what is very very important <clears throat> so very simple here power density calculation the power transmitted is pt okay that is the power transmitted and if the power transmitted is in the open sphere then it will be power transmitted divided by 4 by r square that is what is the area spherical area right? and if it is a directional antenna in that particular direction it has to be multiplied by gain of the antenna so we have done these calculations for various cases now so if you look at it this is the standard case which i have taken power transmitted is 20 watt the gain of the antenna have taken as 17 dB. In fact, these uh, long standing antennas, they have a typical gain of about 17 dB. A numerical value of that is 50. So if you look 50 into 20, is 1000 watt of power is going in that particular direction. Okay. At the distance 1, power density comes out to be 79.6 watt per meter square. I have also put in the microwatt per meter square because I have tried to correlate that. So what happens at 10 meter? Well, it will be 100 times less. What happens at 100 meter? You can see for corresponding to 100, the power density in microwatt is 7960 microwatt per meter square. Now these calculations are done for a single <coughs> carrier. And as I mentioned, it was supposed to be cumulative but in India they use it for individual carrier frequency. If I take a case for 5 carriers and 3 operators, it is still 15 only. In reality it could be 20. So if you do that, everything is getting multiplied by 15 at a distance of 10 meter where lots of people live. Can you imagine what is the power density 11.94 watt per meter square? which is extremely extremely high India is number one in one case where we have adopted the worst radiation now in the whole world so what is that 9.2 watt we have followed ICNIRP guideline I'll just talk about what is ICNIRP it stands for International Commission for Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection now let's just look at a little lower here what Russia adopted since 1970 0.02 See what Australia adopted, 0.0001. It's only to save the cost we have adopted the worst radiation now. This is what close to what we have adopted. What your mobile phone requires is about this much. Now these are the reports, you can see it is a Germany report. They actually mentioned high exposure being greater than 100 microwatt per meter square. What is the medium exposure? This one here, what is low exposure here? Now when they are saying this is high exposure, what we have adopted, 9 into 10 to the power 6, that is 90,000 times more than this, we are saying it is safe. There is a, this bio-initiative report and what they have recommended is 1000 microwatt for outdoor cumulative RF. 
See, it is outdoor. Why outdoor? Indoor has to be less because indoor it is 24 hours. Outdoor is you are moving around. Even that is 1000. What we have adopted is 9000 times more than that. So they have actually written very clearly. See, we are concerned between 10 to 1000. Extreme concern greater than 1000. So we recommend safe power limit up to 50 with upper limit as this. And this we recommend for lifetime exposure so that you are safe. Now let's just see what this ICMIRP guidelines from India has adopted this, which is equal to frequency divided by 200, where frequency is in megahertz. So for GSM 900, it comes to 4.7 watt per meter square. For GSM 1800, again, <coughs> we took this as 1840 in between value, which comes to 9.2 watt per meter square. ICNIRP is only intended to protect the public against short term gross heating effect, okay? And not against biological effects such as cancer and genetic damage from long term low level micro exposure from this, right? And you can see this document also. So, what is already mentioned there is for short term exposure. We have adopted it for 24 hours exposure, okay? And what this exposure really leads to? Let's please look at that. Now, we all know that this is the power density. I have taken it for 940. I have not even taken for 1800, which is higher. So that is 4.7 watt per meter square. Now, this is the power density, right? So power density multiplied by the area will be the power absorbed by the human body, right? I model the human body as a cylinder, okay? So if you model as a cylinder 2 pi rx, 2 pi r is a waste multiplied by height. So I have taken a 34 inches weight. The height I have taken as 5.6 inches. So for that area is 1.43 meter square. The power received by this is human body will be 6.75 watts in one second, right? Now in one day, how